So if I wanted to detect this step edge, so think of this as the x uh, position in the image, and this is the intensity. So this is a one-dimensional profile, and the intensity rises abruptly here, and I wanted to detect that. And let's say I first smooth it with a Gaussian so the actual profile of the image looks like this. If I were to take the first derivative, the first derivative is just the slope of this. So the slope increases gradually, gets to a maximum here, uh, right in the middle, and then starts tailing off and goes back down to zero. If I were to take the second derivative, that's the derivative, that's the slope of this function. So that slope uh, increases rapidly, gets to a maximum here, then slows down, gets to zero here, and then the slope goes negative, right, and then uh, back down to zero. So I could look at the output of the first derivative and say, get me the peak magnitude, and that's the location of this step edge. Or I could look at the output of the second derivative and and get this zero crossing, the place where it crosses zero from positive to negative, and that would be the location of the step edge. So we'll see edge detectors that use uh, either of these techniques. Going to two-dimensional images, um, Sobel operators are a common uh, operator to estimate the derivative in the x and y directions. So this is, uh, instead of that 1 by 2 mask I showed you, this is a 3 by 3 mask to, to compute the x derivative. And this is a 3 by 3 mask to compute the y derivative. So this essentially does some bit of averaging with a 3 by 3 filter, step box average, followed by a, uh, a derivative. And in terms of a second derivative, we can add the uh, second derivative for the x and the second derivative for the y to get the Laplacian operator. And that would have this form 3 by 3 with a minus 4 in the middle and 1's here and zeros in the corners. Um, so to look at the, well I guess I won't do this, uh, I've already done the manual calculation of the digital filter, but you could see how you could compute by hand the the correlation of this with a um, with a corner image, and um, if you had to do a convolution, remember to reflect this. So the positives would be here, and the negatives would be here. Okay, to do this in MATLAB, let me show this example of of this image, the the moon image. So this image um, has a nice edge all the way around the uh, edge of the moon like that. So I'm going to create by hand a Sobel mask, call it HX, which will be minus 1, 0, 1, minus 2, 0, 2, minus 1, 0, 1. And HY is just the transpose of HX. So if I correlate using IM filter my image with HX, let's call that DX, and I'll do the same thing with HY, call it DY. Okay, so this is the um, result of correlating the image with dx, gets the x derivative, and this is the result of correlating the image with y to get the y derivative. So the, the x looks about right, but the y, um, I would expect to see values along the lower edge of the moon here. Okay. But we're getting nothing, we're getting zeros. And the reason is, um, if we look at 
the type of images that we've read in. We've read in an image of type uint8 that's unsigned integer 8-bit. The output images are also of type uint8. So uint8 can only store values between 0 and 255. So our convolution function, I mean our mask here, might give us results less than 0, especially along here. So those results, though, should be negative, but, but being clipped, being forced to fit into a uint8, um, MATLAB just clips those to 0. So instead of uh, applying these masks to a type of uint8, I'm going to convert my image to type double first. And then I'll repeat that filter. So now you can see um, in the Y in particular, the background is this gray color. Over here I have positive values that are a light color, and down below are negative values that are a black color. So gray is actually my zero value here. So um, just a point here. Um, I could have also used this function im to double. This also converts the image to type double, but it scales it to between 0 and 1. If I just did double, it doesn't change the values. It just converts it to double. And instead of using im filter, I could have used filter2 or conv2, which do very similar things. Filter2 always converts to double, and conv2 does a convolution instead of a correlation. Okay, finally, I'll talk about the gradient. So we've, we've got the x derivative and the y derivative. The gradient, remember, is just the vector composed of the x derivative and the y derivative. So we can compute the gradient at every pixel, and, um, and then we can compute the magnitude of the gradient by taking the sum of the squares and then the square root of that. So this would, wherever I have a high gradient magnitude, that means it's big in either the x direction or the y direction or both, so that would signal the presence of an edge. I can also compute the angle of the gradient by taking the arctangent of the ratio of the df, df, dy to df dx. So this would give us the angle of the edge. So in MATLAB, um, I've already done the filtering of the moon with um, the Sobel operators. I can compute the gradient magnitude. I could use a for loop, but I can do it in one line using this. I can say dx um, raised to the second power, but with a period here indicating that I want to do a point by point operation instead of a matrix operation. Same thing for y. I can add the two, two uh, arrays point by point, and then point by point taking the square root of that. So, and also I can calculate the angle using the MATLAB function ATAN2. ATAN2, remember, gives you the full angle span from minus pi to plus pi. Um, and that's done at every point in the image. Uh, let's see. So let me show that with the moon function as well. Uh, Okay, so my gradient magnitude will be d, dx raised to the second power, dy raised to the second power, and that result raised to the 0.5 power. And my angle will be a tan 2 dy dx. Okay, so that's the gradient magnitude. So it gives you a nice, strong response wherever I have a, an edge, step edge, which is all the way around the border of the moon. OK, the angle image looks a little weird. Um, remember, though, that in the input image, uh, we had 
basically nothing in the background here, maybe a little bit of noise. So we're just seeing these random fluctuations in gradient angle, even though the gradient magnitude is very small. But around the border of the moon, where the gradient magnitude is large, uh, the angle shows a nice uh, range, um, which is represented by this change in intensity. I can see that more clearly by using a false coloring. Okay, this applies a false coloring to the image. I can see what it's doing by putting a color bar on there. So along here, I have this light blue color, which is probably around minus one radian. Uh, over here on the left edge, I have this green color, which is about zero. At the top, I have this color, which is probably around plus 1.5 radian. So essentially, the gradient is going from a negative uh, 90 degrees down here to a zero to a positive 90 degrees here.